Okay, this is a cardiac probe, and we're going to do an echocardiogram on a Dalmatian. And I hold the probe with the forefinger right above the probe, and I use this to collapse the lung to open up the lung, uh, open up the window uh, to perform the echocardiogram more easily than trying to chase the window. And uh, use the middle finger on the cursor, right here, and the thumb. And I'm going to use the lower, the little finger to balance the probe and keep my axis in the right position. So. First maneuver is use the finger to collapse the lung. We will move the front leg forward, and the angle of the probe is going to be pretty much parallel with the angle of the tricep here. And we start with a four chamber long axis. This is our happy place. This is where we're going to go back to if we get lost or get off angle. And I'm going to start with my measurements right away. Take my left ventricular end load, my EPSS, and go to five chamber, and get my June Boon LA to AO with the aortic valve right in the middle, valve opening, valve closure. I'm going to save that. I'll go back to four chamber. Get LA max. I'll take my measurement real quick, and it's going to be parallel to the mitral valve annulus. You can make a, an imaginary line through the mitral valve annulus and make sure that you're parallel between the two lines. Saving that. So from here, I'm going to go four, ch four chamber to five chamber and make an efficiency clip from that. Adjust my gain a little bit. Four chamber to five chamber. Then I'll go to short axis as well. Two. Mercedes-Benz heart base, nice three valves in the middle, closed aorta, take a clip of that, and I will slide up and down the ribs or fan the tail of the probe, go from heart base, a Mercedes-Benz, to fish lips, to mushroom, and then back again. I'll change my angle as I go back and forth, and I'll get the best clip of that. I'll go back to four chamber, long axis, twisting away. And from here, go to position two, which I'm going caudal rib space, pointing to the right shoulder. Hit the right atrium and the tricuspid valve. Put the tail of the probe up, tail down, and get the pulmonary artery. So tail up, tricuspid valve, and right atrium, tail down, pulmonary artery. And I'll save a clip of that. From here, I can get my Doppler as well. Baseline. This dog has a little bit of tricuspid insufficiency. I use color first to identify regurg jet if it's there, but I'm still going to use spectral, do spectral Doppler on top of it. And I get a little tricuspid insufficiency here. I might mark tricuspid valve, measure out the insufficiency velocity, save that. So from here in the right atrium, I'm going to bring the tail down, and I'll get the pulmonary artery. Spectral Doppler at that. Right at the pulmonary valve. I have some insufficiency. This insufficiency jet, this forward jet. So I'll measure the forward jet. I'll put the color on it, over the valve. You can see the insufficiency jet is red. Red is towards the probe. So I'm going to go to CW. Right over the red jet. The CW will allow me to quantify. Turn down the volume a little bit. Probably the best insufficiency jet there. It's not clinically significant. Get the mitral valve Doppler. I go back to four chamber. Put the color over it. There's a little insufficiency jet.
So I'll look for the insufficiency jet. It's that little mosaic right here. And I'll drop the color over it. And I'm not completely lined up because I'm underestimating. MR jet should be about 5 meters per second. And we can see that we're only measuring out 2.79 meters per second. So that is not going to be accurate. So we'll take a different angle at it. And what I'll do is I'll move caudally here and get the cursor in, a, in an angle of 15 degrees theta of insufficiency. And you can see that the velocity increases significantly here as we get lined up with flow. About 4.79, which is still probably underestimated, but it's a lot higher than the 2.7 that we had. So I'm going to try to get in flow more in line with flow again. Get that lung out of the way. This dog is not volume overload, so this window is not real big. Still a little bit short, so if that's all we get, that's all we get, but I'm going to check it again at a different angle. I'm getting a nice clip. He's got a slight prolapse of the mitral valve. So I'll go to short axis. When I'm on short axis now, I want to get a heart-based view of the aortic valve and the left atrium. So now I'm going to go to position three. Patient still on right lateral recumbency. Push my hand down like I'm holding a beer can and drop the probe right on it. And I'm going to find my window into the right atrium. Coming right off of the sternum. And I open up the window by pushing down on the lung. And the right atrium is going to be here and a tricuspid valve and it'll just adjust in and out of that until it comes in as clean as it's going to come in. There we go, it's tricuspid valve and right atrium right oracle. And if there were a mass here I'd see it right in that position. Save that clip. Last position I'm going to go to is position four, which is right under the xiphoid. I'm using my hand to push against the abdomen and the probe is going to be parallel with the patient. Adjust my depth. And get the aorta coming right down the middle. I have mirror image artifact I'm working around, but I have a nice clean aortic envelope. I'm still not happy with that mitral insufficiency jet, so I'm going to try to work and get an angle to where I can get it from here. And I don't think I'm going to be able to get it from here. So. I'm going to try it back on the four chamber again. I might have a better view from the right peristernal. There we go. It's a little bit better. And it's not a really wide jet, so you just have to keep fishing around until you get it in pretty clean. 4.81. It's about as good as I'm going to get. But usually they'll be around 5.2, 5.4, and so forth. So now, as far as going to our measurements, I collected all my measurements to begin with, early. So now if we had an unruly patient, he'd be off of the table. I'm going to go through and find my best measurements. It's an EPSS that's nice and easy, so I'm going to take the septum, distance from the septum to the apical extension of the mitral valve, and it should be under 0.8. Back to left ventricle, I've got a nice pretty clean left ventricle, this is a good one as an example. So I'm going to go to RVLV, LV study, and I'm going to take the septum at the leading edge to leading edge, and we come down, this is internal diameter, I'm not going to measure this because this is papillary. You can see that it's papillary if you look on your B mode. So you don't measure that, you go past it to the next hard line, which is the endocardium of the free wall, leading edge to leading edge, and your septum and your free wall should be about the same, which they are. So that's fair game. I'm going to go over to systole. My point of initial measurement is going to be a little bit lower than in diastole. Leading edge, leading edge. I'm going to skip this papillary, leading edge, 
the leading edge. And if I want, I can follow, if this line isn't clean, I can use this horizontal line to line it up with the hard line of the endocardium in the other view. So I know exactly where to do it. The last measurement is the heart rate, so I'm going to go peak to peak on the heart rate of 68. I have that measurement. I think we have to do the LA to AO as our last one. Aortic valve's right in the middle. That's what we want. This is valve, aortic valve opening and aortic valve closure. So to do the LA to AO, we take our measurement. We take our measurement at the end of the aortic valve closure, the diameter of the aorta, leading edge to leading edge, and the maximum left atrium, leading edge to leading edge. This dog's under a little bit of sedation, so he's a little bit, maybe a little bit smaller than normal left atrium. And that's about it. It's a nice clean echocardiogram. The only thing that I don't like on this is the microphone's efficiency velocity is a little bit lower than what we would expect, but he is under sedation, so that might have something to do with it. But it's only 4.9, but remember that it should be up around the 5 to 6 meters per second and higher, especially in hypertensive patients.